for me, indigenous health and well-being, I'm Swampy Cree. So indigenous health and well-being, I always try to think about, um, and this is also an answer to another question about what are my thoughts on reconciliation? Because my thoughts on reconciliation are very similar to my thoughts on indigenous health and well-being. For me, because I'm Swampy Cree, in my language, we have a word for the good life. And that word is Minopamatasewin. Minopamatasewin tells us that uh, if we are seeking the good life, um, we're seeking that safety and that love and that accessing of um, basic needs, food, shelter, uh, water. Um, and I think that Minopamatasewin is a beautiful goal. So when people ask me, am I working towards reconciliation? I always say no. I'm working towards Minopamatasewin. And if you're serious about building relationships with the First Nations and Mate, First Nations and Métis and Inuit in your community, I want you to think about what word in their language translates to the good life. What word in their dialect translates to uh, health and well-being um, instead of reconciliation? Because too often, as Pam mentioned, reconciliation is placed on the shoulders and the burden of the folks who are disproportionately negatively affected by these systems of family separation that are hurting First Nations, Métis, and Inuit. And I think that um, it is on all of us to make sure that we affect these systems. And I'm not working towards reconciliation. I'm working towards minopamatse when I'm working towards the good life. And that's what I want you to do. So I think it's important for me to think about that. Um, the other quick thoughts um, about Indigenous health and well-being is that we have to think about social determinants of health. All right, so making sure that people do have the house that they need, make sure people have access to uh, education, make sure people have access to recreation and employment. These are all important things that lead to a good life. Um, and so I want everyone to think about what those things mean. Now, the other thing I want to think about is we have a measurement problem in this country. All right, we have a measurement problem in health, in justice, in education, in child and family services. We have a measurement problem. And the measurement problem is that we're stuck in the deficit all right, too often when we're talking about improving health and well-being for people, we're talking about reducing negative measurements. All right, so how many people were homicided last year? Okay, 100. How many people do we want homicided this year? Oh, look it, only 75. Everyone, let's have a dance party because only 75 people got homicided. That to me is an important measurement to take a look at, but is not the only thing we need to be talking about. What happened to prevent homicides? What was present in the community that allowed people to have a good life, to feel safe, to feel well, to feel respected, so they didn't have to commit that intense crime of homicide? I'm interested in that preventative side, the positive measurement. And so if you have any school courses that are called uh, world issues, indigenous issues, women's issues, I want you to push back on that because that's like a very issue and negative uh, angle. And I think that when you're talking about indigenous issues, or women's issues, really what we're talking about is topics. Because a topic can include, yeah, an issue, but it also includes a solution. And more importantly, it includes an action, something that we can do to address the challenge that we're learning about to make sure we can apply in our daily life some type of a solution that helps address that historical or current uh, challenge. So to me, uh, the biggest current challenge that we have in terms of reconciliation are that we have systems of family separation. A lot of people respond by doing land acknowledgement. And these land acknowledgements um, often are things that they read off a piece of paper, mispronouncing all the nations. Now, a land acknowledgement to me should be something that you're able to recite from your heart. And it should be something personal. It should be um, you saying what your relationship with that territory is. But a land acknowledgement is not enough. Um, while you're giving the land acknowledgement, my challenge to all of you is also to make sure that you're including the actions that you're taking to make sure you're addressing that that land is cared for and the indigenous uh, peoples in that territory are cared for in a good way.